For a nine month period, uh, we went through lots of counseling and uh, we reconciled and uh, there was lots of apologies, lots of repentance on my part. And then about a year after our first son was born, this is, this is Ben. Uh, Raymond Armijo, you stand up or raise your hand. He took this portrait. <laughs> so this is a portrait done by, by Raymond, our photographer. So, uh, however, you know, even though I had said this prayer, I was still a long ways from, from walking with the Lord in a, in a, in a manner that, uh, that when I look back on it, wasn't very deep. Um, so one of the things that happened about uh, two years after my son was born was uh, a couple of a couple of events that really really tested me and uh, the first event was my my father was diagnosed with uh, liver cancer and they said it was terminal uh, then after about three months after my my dad's diagnosis my mom was diagnosed with ovarian cancer and i have uh, never spent so many nights in hospitals in my lifetime as i did during that that one and a half year period of, of time so uh, I found myself being in waiting rooms with uh, my aunt and my uncle. Oftentimes, both of my parents were in hospital stays. And my aunt and uncle uh, did something for me that, that I'll uh, forever be grateful to them. They, they invited me to church. Uh, they said, um, you know, would you like to go to church with us? And um, we were hurting so bad that we knew we needed something. So we decided to attend church. And it, and it turned out to be uh, Grace Church. It, it was the same church that I grew up with as a child, and they had moved to Louisiana and San Antonio, which is just a, less than a five-minute drive from my house. And it just turned into be a really uh, God thing that, that uh, we ended up going to this church that I grew up in as a, as a kid. Uh, one of the things that happened when my dad was dying of cancer was uh, my aunt got a hold of the Jesus belt. Uh, that was in uh, my dad's original dialect of Cantonese. And we, uh, uh, we, I remember watching the Jesus film with my dad. I couldn't understand it because it was in Cantonese. I, I don't speak. I'm from Albuquerque. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and, but the, the, the great thing was, was that uh, my dad, who was never a believer in Christ, really loved that movie. And he said, wow, that's, that's pretty amazing. And then, uh, probably a couple of months after that, uh, my dad was uh, checked into St. Joseph's Hospital. And in um, all of the rooms uh, at St. Joseph's Hospital, they would have crosses on the wall. And one of the things that uh, my dad would tell me is, is that whenever I'm feeling really bad, I look upon that cross and it gives me comfort. And then a couple of days after that, my dad passed away. And I, I just take comfort in really believing that my dad believed in Jesus before uh, he passed away. About uh, three years later, uh, you know, I, I'm going to church now. I've surrendered uh, a lot of things over to Jesus, surrendered the marriage over to Jesus, but, but I'm still far from, from a finished work, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, one aspect of my life that I had not surrendered to the Lord was, was my work life. And, um, in 1999, uh, one of the things that was occurring was there was a lot of business experts talking about how important it was to stay on the leading edge of technology, that uh, uh, the world was going to be converting to, uh, to digital technology, and especially if you're in the photography industry, it was going to convert from using film to digital. Uh, so uh, my brother and I, um, you, you know, Jer Jerome talked about the difference between audacious and reckless, well, we were reckless. Uh, we decided to bet the company on this move. So we uh, made the move to um, get every business loan that we could, get every uh, business lease that we could, get, bring up every credit card that we could. And we acquired tons and tons of uh, equipment uh, to do this. There was a, uh, a digital camera back for our Hasselblad camera one digital camera bag at that time cost twenty thousand dollars alone and we 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 um, and we got three of them um, and uh, so we bring in all this new great fancy equipment and 
there was only one problem. We couldn't get it to work. Uh, we were on the bleeding edge of technology, not the leading edge of technology. And we basically had to shut down the company for about a three month period of time until we could get all the technical issues uh, worked out. But, you know, as many of you in business know, when you uh, take on and you start shutting down cash flow for, for three months, you can get into trouble, a lot of trouble, in a very quick amount of time. So, um, you know, our expenses were way up here, um, and our sales were, you know, non-existent. Uh, but we finally, after about a three-month period of time, were able to resolve some of these technical issues, and it was right before the Christmas season. And I remember uh, staying up till four in the morning many nights, getting out orders for Christmas, and having the busiest Christmas season we had ever had. And when all was said and done, however, after Christmas, um, the Christmas season was over with. I looked at everything, and I looked at our checking book, checking account, and I, I noticed that that we were still in a mountain of, of trouble. There were still lots and lots of unpaid bills that were due a month or two ago. And uh, that, was, that was very miserable to me. So I remember sitting in church uh, in January and just being miserable, feeling miserable. And uh, one of the things that I noticed was uh, in the bulletin, there was a, an announcement that there was a men's Bible study meeting on Tuesday nights. And I said, I'm so desperate, I need something. So I decided to go to this men's Bible study on, on Tuesday nights. And it turned out to be led by this guy by the name of Jim Allen. And uh, uh, it turned out that Jim was going through this study on his Tuesday night Bible, a study called Experiencing God by Henry Blackaby and uh, by King. And I, uh, as, I, as I started attending this, men's Bible study every Tuesday night. Um, it became more and more convicting. What a sorry excuse of a Christian I was for, for one thing. But one of the things that, uh, that we did was uh, we memorized a scripture verse every week. And one week, there was a scripture verse that just really hit me between the eyes. It was uh, John 15, 5. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And that very, the very last part of that verse convicted me so, so much because all of a sudden the light came on that I was doing business completely apart from him. And I was doing it all under my own power, my own intelligence, my own abilities. And basically it was leading to nothing but frustration and uh, despair. Uh, so uh, one of the things that uh, that happened as I was going through experiencing God was uh, Jim said, you know, I have a friend that, um, that you might want to uh, meet and get together with. Uh, there's this guy that has a, a business fellowship uh, that uh, he's doing in his company. You might want to talk to him about joining. So who was it? It was this guy. <laughs> it's, uh, so so he, he told me about this guy by the name of Bill Loney, who was uh, involved with this ministry called Fellowship of Companies for Christ. And I started going to his, uh, his Monday group at noon uh, in uh, February of 2000. And I'm still going there because I can't, I just can't let go of how much this, this group has meant to me. Uh, one of the very first things that uh, uh, Bill was doing, not only in his fellowship group, but, but also uh, he was teaching a Sunday school class was there was a course that he was teaching called Leading a Company for Christ by Dr. Bruce Wilkinson. And this was produced probably about 30 years ago. And it's, uh, uh, many of you have seen it. It's a very old video series and, you know, very old polyester suits and those kinds of things. Um, but the content is so timeless and so rich that uh, it was life changing to me, this, this, this uh, class called Experience, I mean, Leading a Company for Christ. And uh, one of the things that, um, that FCCI did for me, it made me look at, at business in a whole different light. Uh, one of the verses that he talked about was Matthew 6, 24. Uh, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. And 
Just that verse alone was very, very convicting to somebody who's been, who's in business for a number of years and everything is calibrated upon money. And I just, and it just began this question of asking myself, well, how do you practically, how do you practically do that? Another verse uh, that he talked about, another set of verses he talked about, Ephesians 4, 11 through 12. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. And one of the things that Bruce Wilkinson talked about was, was that what this is saying is, is that it's not the church's role to do, do, do the priesting. It's the church's role to equip everybody to do the priesting. And I have never, ever been presented with that notion in church before, that we are to be priests wherever we are. And I looked at myself as being the furthest thing from a, uh, from a priest that uh, I could ever imagine. So that was very, very convicting to me. This is... Um, this is something that's kind of interesting to me. The, the journey that I've had with, with FCCI has been absolutely life-changing. And uh, you know, one of the things I was talking to Reed about just uh, before I came up here was um, for whatever reason, a uh, life transformation takes place. God has chosen to use FCCI groups as a forum for life transformation. And uh, one of the things that, uh, this was a slide from from one of the FCCI's uh, presentations that was given, Life on Life, a few men and women, uh, laboring in the lives of a few men and women weekly for one hour and a half in a small business leadership group format. So that sounds very simple. It's simple but powerful. Basically, an FCCI group is comprised of, of uh, the first half hour we watch a world-class video teaching from the FCCI library, which is the very best in the world about marketplace ministry. The second half hour is spent where we discuss how we can apply it to our businesses and our personal lives. And then the last half hour is where we pray for each other as, uh, as business leaders. Uh, so uh, just to give you an illustration of, of how transformation can take place, I'd like to, to share something that happened in, in one of our FCCI groups. It's the, the Friday uh, half-day group that Reed Warner leads. Um, and I'll, I'll share a little bit about that, but to give you a little bit of background information, I went to a FCCI area leader meeting in uh, June of 2007, I believe. It was in Denver, Colorado. And basically what that is, is all the FCCI area leaders from around the country get together. And one of the area leaders at that time was a guy by the name of Mike Reynolds. Mike is from Reno, Nevada. And he, has an ad he had an advertising agency at that time. And one of the things that Mike shared with us, us was um, he and um, some of his FCCI friends and, and other volunteers, they put together a documentary. They produced a documentary called the Crystal Darkness. And this is Reno, Reno, Nevada. And the reason why this is important was that at that time, he said uh, meth addiction was absolutely destroying their city from the inside out. It had become a, an ep epidemic. So one of the things that they wanted to do was they wanted to produce a documentary that would present um, all of the evil that was involved with, uh, with uh, crystal methamphetamine. And uh, one of the amazing things that, that happened was they produced this documentary and they got all of the TV stations to buy in to air it in a roadblock, meaning that that was all that was aired at 6.30 p.m. on this night that they aired it. It turned, into be, it turned out to be the highest rated television program in Northern Nevada history, and they won two Emmys as a result of that. So Mike, and, Mike is sitting in this room of other FCCI leaders, and one of the things he was saying is, is that, um, you know, you, you, you all should uh, try and put together a crystal darkness campaign in your community. And uh, immediately, I just, I just thought to myself, that is the most ridiculous idea I've ever heard in my life. Uh, I certainly can't do that. I, I sell pictures for a living. Uh, I don't have any pull with TV stations. I don't have any pull with uh, law enforcement. I don't have any pull with city governments. I don't have any pull with any of these types of entities that would be required to put together a documentary for this. So, so immediately I just went home and I pretty much dismissed this idea as being, uh, that's just, not going to happen.